the power sweep. Actually, it's the it's the lead play in our in our offense. We ask our Y end or a tight end to open up somewhere between six feet and nine feet to get an isolation with the with the linebacker. Tell the tackle to take the defensive end if he's over him. If he's not, to drive down on the first man to his inside. Y end has the linebacker taken out. What's up, everybody? Welcome into PTA Live. You got Tim live in Green Bay. We got Jacob the Beard on the border of enemy territory in Minnesota. You guys can check us out. Packernet Podcast. And of course, you can email the show Packers Total Access at gmail.com. Jacob, how's it going tonight, man? Ooh, it's going good, man. Uh, just ate a bunch of chili. So if you see me randomly just leave for a minute, you know why I'm dealing with that. It's been rainy all day here in uh, Hudson, Wisconsin, so it sounds like it's moving right into your way there. So, yeah, my stream cuts out because it's, it's raining like crazy outside. But we're going to be doing a little Monday – or no, a mock draft Monday on a Tuesday. On so, a Tuesday, just like you had chili on Taco Tuesday. Exactly. I did tacos tonight. You know, I kept it real. Taco Tuesday in this household for sure. <laughs> yeah. So like we're flying – uh, Without the boss tonight, uh, Clayton looks like he's uh, held up tonight. So uh, we're going to do our best to uh, pull off a show. Uh, as I see everybody rolling in here in the chat, shout out to uh, Eric Sutherland in the chat, M. Smitty, A. Fam, Larry Cano is in the chat. Who else we got in here, Jacob? Dumpster. Uh, all, a ton of people. Jay, Deadfish, Afton's there. We got M. Smitty. We got all a bunch of people. Bates, obviously. I'm uh, if you guys maybe got a chance to float over to either my Twitter or Clayton's Twitter, I was able to put up a few of those songs that I made of the guys. Saw a few people were in there, saw some likes on there. That's cool. Um, but yeah, I figured if um, we'll just go over quick what we're going to cover today, we're going to look over a Paul Brettel article where it just talks about the OTAs, give you guys some other dates real quick that we need to keep aware because before you know it, can you believe it, Tim, that in seven days, roughly eight days, from tomorrow, we're going to have a draft. I mean, it's music it's to my ears, man. Crazy. Music to my ears. Exactly. So, yeah, we'll uh, touch over some dates like that. Breeze into some draft talk. We'll lean pretty heavy on the chat tonight, guys. So let us know. We're going to start a draft coming up here uh, in the next segment. But we're kind of trying to toss around with what to do exactly with it. Should we do like a seven round mock with just the Packers? maybe picking an offense or a defensive position for each pick. We tossed around the idea of doing like a three round mock for the whole NFC North. I don't know. You guys think about it. Well, for we definitely want to trade back, right? Cause we want to trade back and try to stick yeah. in the first round. So maybe just do like a seven round mock with the Packers, but try to trade back in the first, keep it in the first round. See how that goes. We could take maybe one or two picks for each position. I don't know. Think about it. But anyways, what else, anything else you want to open with Tim? No, that's pretty much it. I mean, we might as well hit on this uh, Paul Brettel article that you uh, that you found because we are uh, in the swing of things. Players are in the facility. Uh, we had some good uh, – I don't know if you saw the uh, photos on Twitter, um, seeing the boys walking around, getting back yeah. to a uh, little, little bit of activity, little uh, workouts, probably light duty at this stage of the game. So, uh, I don't know. It's pretty cool. A lot of things happen in, in Titletown right now. But uh, we got this article here that you uh, pulled up from uh, Paul Brettel. This is on, uh, what is this from? MSN.com. Yeah, Paul Brettel, OTA's key key Dayton Packers championship offseason. Um, so you found this today. Yeah, go. Paul's awesome. He uh, he basically just summarizes. It's a good article. It's It's got a good length to it. Um, he just gets a bunch of different quotes from guys that, like you talked about, were in the building. Just uh, what it means to be back, what their kind of off-season mentality is. We talked about how Preston Smith said it specifically. It's actually highlighted right there where he says we've got to be, we got to have a championship off-season. 
um, said Preston Smith back in January. He said, so everything rolls into the season because at the end of the day, those games come back to following your training, trusting your technique, and trusting everything you work for hard in the offseason. Coming into this next offseason, we've got to focus on the things we can improve on, make sure that our weaknesses are our strengths, and we can improve on the things that we're good at. So I thought that was a cool thing that he highlighted there, that these guys, we've talked about how Jordan Love has been already doing a bunch of offseason work. Um, and you know how we've, we're not going to throw no shade, but we've had a, a long stretch of where um, the offseason, specifically for the quarterback position, meant that they're off doing their own kind of like retreat slash vacation slash tripping in a cave, licking toads slash... <laughs> You know, whatever else. So I don't throw a football until August type thing. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> so it's cool. It's a change of pace. Uh, we saw most of that wide receiver room was there, I think. Um, you know, seeing a bunch of what was even more cool than that for me was seeing Jair Alexander with um, Xavier Kenny, especially yeah. being that, that job for whatever reason didn't feel the need to come in there um, last year. But um, this is a voluntary, the, the, Voluntary OTAs started on the fifteenth. Yeah. And, um, so yeah. So Jair's there. That's that's huge. You know, that goes uh, hand in hand with the uh, championship offseason mentality, right? Like you said, they're voluntary uh, workouts at this point. Obviously, you know he's a veteran. I believe last year he just chose to work out with his with his trainers or his personal uh, staff and routine. Um, but this year, totally different, man. And it's uh, good to see him up here. Huh? <laughs> Uh, yeah, another quote that was in here, Matt LaFleur, basically it said that we're either getting better or we're getting worse. There's no staying the same. Um, so hopefully that they're changing that and using that kind of mentality. Right here basically said that um, he also reiterates to him that, that there's not a guarantee. There's no certain spot, anything moving forward. But they, they had a great year last year, especially with how young we were, the back end of the year specifically. But they want to keep that momentum they were building into this off season so that they can carry it into the start of next season. And I think that they're on the right track for that. Um, a couple other dates that you want to keep an eye on the other OTAs. There's going to be one, the 20th, the 21st, the 23rd, 29th, the 30th and the 31st. And then they also have three practices the week of June 3rd. And then I believe they have a rookie OTA that's usually held like a week or so after the draft. So there's going to be a lot of, actually a lot of Packers news with guys around the building, hopefully. And hopefully we keep um, relatively injury free over the, that period because that'd be terrible. Yeah. yeah. It'd be nice going into uh, the mandatory mini camps in June. You know, I see those dates too, June 11th, 12th and 13th. Yep. Um, that'll be really cool, man. If guys can be healthy, um, you know, cause this, you're right. It's that time of year, right? You're just kind of getting your legs under you again. And that's when you can tweak things and, you know, we want to have our best feet forward going into this season, considering all the uh, the injuries that we dealt with last year. So I think uh, this is paramount. These guys getting in here and, and getting their stuff together there early for sure. Um, yeah. And like Coach LaFleur saying, like you're either getting better or you're getting worse. You're not – there's no standstill. There's no idle in the NFL. If you're not uh, – you know, it's like in business, right? If you're not growing, you're dying. It's 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 the same thing on a football team, especially with a young team, I think. Right. I mean, you guys have to constantly be focused on, uh, you know, further development uh, and getting better each and every day. So it's good to see these guys have that mentality, setting the tone early. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and yeah, we talked about too, like just that I, I believe personally that the off season is off season is when you get a lot of that team building camaraderie stuff, like, brotherhood bonds, you know, doing like charity events together, working out, doing kind of the small drills. Um, I know that that personally is when I built most of my friends, friendships when I was playing football and playing sports. And I think that like, you know, last year, if I'm not mistaken, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong in the chat and Tim, but it felt like they were the closest team. It seemed like that we've had in a long time. It seemed like guys were legitimately friends with each other on and off the field. Um, it sounds like they actually went and hung out with each other on and off the field. So I hope that they mimic that now that, because again, we're going to have, I think probably the youngest team, if not the top two or three youngest squad in the NFL. So for them to get together early, start building that trust, that chemistry, a lot of that stuff, it's, it's going to be, plus it keeps them out of trouble. We got a yeah. group of guys that young, like you want to try to harness all that young energy and keep them doing stuff that's positive. So absolutely, I think that'd be good. 
I agree. I mean, that's huge because, you know, if you're willing to lay it out on the line for the guy next to you, um, you know, that goes a long way when you're talking about grinding through a, you know, 17 game season and then making a playoff push. Um, you know, you can't have any of that, uh, you know, I don't know, extracurricular animosity or, you know, and, and honestly, it's tough because early in the year, you know, guys are fighting for spots. You know, there's a lot of young players on this team that are going to be fighting for roster spots. And uh, so it is a competition. Um, but there's that point, you know, you get to the end of training camp through the through the preseason and, you know, the team kind of galvanizes as one unit. And, uh, you know, you go with your uh, your best foot forward starting off the year, which this year will be a little different, right? It'll be a little bit unique kicking off in uh in san paulo brazil there so um i don't know jacob do you think there's um you think there's anything that they're uh looking at doing differently uh this year maybe not as far as camp as a whole but maybe rounding the turn coming out of uh preseason and training camp going into uh week one anything they I, think they're going to look at it a little different i i don't know because I guess I, I'm not privy to the actual nuts and bolts of what the details were. I mean, you were there for a lot of it, so you actually would probably see, like, procedurally, if it is the same or different whatsoever. I think, in my opinion, the thing that they've already done different was making major moves in the free agent market. We just talked about how Xavier McKinney was there. Think about already what that has done, signing these two players, when we should have maybe had a, a little bit of a mix-up stuff going on with the defense. Jow has been up and down with his attitude signing a guy like McKinney, who he knows is maybe the best safety in the league, automatically made job be like, well, I'm going to practice. And now he's hanging out with him, walking in with his head held high, smiling and everything on the opposite side of the ball. They go and they uh, get rid of Jones, which everybody, that was like an absolute gut punch, right? So we're thinking like that's never going to be remedied. Um, then all of a sudden we go back and we have Jacobs now where he just, I don't know if you saw him in those clips, but he just has like this presence about him. He looked calm. He looked big. He looked like the guy's already had a mad amount of respect for him, and that's kind of the vibe that he's given off because he has been a captain pretty much everywhere he's went. It sounds like he's a big locker room guy. So the two pieces already that they were trying to build and replace safety in the running back room with those signings, and I think already you can tell that it's the guys have kind of responded to it, which is cool. So. I agree, and I think they're both fitting in really well here. Um, that was probably part of that deal too, right? You know, as far as – what the guys bring uh, X's and O's and on film and, you know, what they bring to the table as players is obviously the biggest point, but you also got to know a guy's going to fit in with your culture and what you're trying to do here. And I think Xavier McKinney is definitely that guy. And uh, Josh Jacobs looks like uh, he's going to fit right in that, that running back room. I saw a couple of videos uh, yesterday of him and Dylan and Emmanuel Wilson and the boys, you know, getting ready for, uh, for exercises. And, um, you know, like you said, Jacob, you can see it, man. That stuff is, you know, really easy to see when there's good chemistry, man. It just oozes out of the guys and you can see that they're relaxed and having a good time, but, you know, focused on what, uh, what the task is, which is bringing Lombardi home this year for sure. Yeah. Bates hit it on the head right here where he goes, I think the McKinney signing helped a lot for the team spirit, especially after the Brazil trade, which we all know, Mr. Tim was not happy with that Rizul trade. No, uh, so not at all. <laughs> I also wanted to highlight here, too, that uh, was it? Nope, not that one. Sorry, Tool, for this. Uh, it was Chris said these young guns are fighting to get that paid. Show me the money. Uh, yeah. Got to love capitalism at its finest. And I agree. And we talked about that, too, that that's the plus of having such a young, a, a non number one wide receiver. You wouldn't think that that'd be a benefit, but we have four maybe five guys that can be plugged and played at that number one spot at any given time, which yep. keeps all of their market value somewhat even. And, you know, if they want to leave and test the market, then cool. But we already talked about that. Uh, AFM coming in here strong says he heard that Caleb Williams has signed an NI deal with uh, Sephora. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear that. I heard that uh, maybe he's going with it, but maybe it's Maybelline. So. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You guys are terrible. Yeah. I see you had to put AFAM's uh, chat up there because we probably can't put Eric Sutherland's <laughs> chats up there, can we? Uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Prince is saying Jake Chavink did a trade back into here. I'll throw it up here. It's easier. Did a trade back into round one after using 25 and it worked pretty good. I think you got Murphy and McKinstry. That's that's interesting way of doing it. I don't want to steal that idea now that he's already done it. But um, <laughs> yeah, I was thinking too. Look at here. 
SDN 40, Dylan and Jacobs were seen plowing fields together, allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> I, hope, I hope that's true. I hope they both were wearing their John Deere greens. That'd be good. Uh, John Deere green. On a hot summer night, he rode Billy Bob loves Charlene. Coming soon to karaoke night near you. Okay, this is good. AJ Dillon. <laughs> two girl. Oh, there you go. That's a good one. AFAM with the with the zingers already. That's nice. Not gonna lie, that was pretty good. Yeah, that All was right. uh well, anything serious. Yeah, Southern actually says something serious here. He says that we should uh, have Mims play and Tom goes to center. So I'm assuming he means Mims to right tackle. Okay. Mary Smith from Georgia to right tackle and then switch switching Cham to center. Would you then want us Sutherland to kick uh, Myers over to right guard, or would you want us to try Sean Ryan or draft a different right guard? Hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know about you. What do you think, Jacob? I'm kind of over the Sean Ryan experience. Um, yeah. I don't know where he plays. Where does he play well? Well, well, I don't know. I know we could try him at right guard. It seems like that's where he was um, slotted into trying to supposedly take over. I don't, I, I'm kind of with you. I've, I'm, I'm a little bit over it. I would more like to see if Zach or if uh, Myers could possibly make the switch to right guard just because he's so big. But, right. And we've seen flashes where he's not the worst person in the world. But uh, let's see here. He says, kick Myers to the curb, draft Zinter, Zach Zinter. Okay, so he's ready to just get done with him. I would honestly, uh, don't get me wrong, I would love that. If Center can come back from the injury, he was one of the best guards on one of the best teams, uh, one of the best offensive lines in college football. So that would be kind of cool if you thought about that. You'd have Walker, Jenkins, Tom at center, Zach Center at right guard, and Mims at right tackle. That sounds kind of cool, actually. I'm not going to lie. He can block. He can <laughs> block. Thank you, Emilio. <laughs> and it's nice having Emilio in here for once. Yeah, by the way, Emilio, if you're listening, which I'm sure you are, because you're always just listening, pretending like you're working or you're busy, why don't you get back in here and actually help us out, man? I made you two songs, two different songs for you, and you haven't been back since. <laughs> it's cheap. It's Maybe crazy. he's not a fan. I don't know. I liked uh, the one you did for me, though. That was pretty good. Yeah. If you guys are still, again, if you want to check that out, it's on my uh, Twitter. Made a song. A pop song about how Tim is a secret Taylor Swift fan. <laughs> it's a banger. It it's, is a uh, banger. AI is going to be the death of us. <laughs> it really is. It's scary. Uh, SDN40 says trading up from 41 is attractive. All the first round values get scooped up quick in the second, cheaper than trading up in the first two. That's, you know, we could do that today. Try and we could still trade back at 25, but then mm -hmm. we can still try to make a move. Say we're at 41, but the problem is, is you have to stop the, uh, you have to pause the draft, you know what I mean? And really like see who's there. PFF doesn't make it super friendly for that. Okay. Because you'd have to pause it and make sure you can jump up to see, unless you just want to shake the dice and see who's there at a certain point. But I think we should just try the trade back. Why don't we do that? You want to get it set up? Let's, uh, let's see here. We can see that. Yeesh. Yeesh. You can see that. Right. Okay. We might people. Let's, uh, oh, sorry about that. Hey. <laughs> let's uh, let's try this again. Let's see if we can go. There we go. How about that? How about full screen? I like that. Yeah. So uh, let's click it to seven rounds up there, Tim. You guys in the chat too. Let us know as soon as you can if you have any. Um... So SDN forty wants us to use slow mode. If we want, if we did slow mode, that means that we could probably try to move up in the chat. So if you go here, Bates as well says if you. Use PFF, set it to slow at first. Once you make the trades you want, you can change that sucker back to fast. Same thing with Brock saying. Put it in draft on slower, and you can trade up from 41. All right. And then how do you guys feel about the slider? Yeah, public versus PFF. The public versus the PFF board. I was thinking maybe somewhere in the middle. Maybe the chat, you guys let us know what you think. Because you get different results, right? I mean, especially with the trades. Yeah. You're gonna. It's going to look a lot different. Uh, if we move that uh, that slider further over to the right, I think, um, you know, some of those drafts that we have done on this simulator earlier with just the public side, it, it's kind of like super predictable, you know. So, right. um, 
Coach Len makes a good point, too, that says uh, trading back from 41 makes more sense to him. It may make more sense to me as well, depending on the pool of players that's there. But I do notice that a lot of times at 41, I'm like, man, I could pick like five people here and be happy with any one of them. Um, but So, yeah, unless you guys see anything else in the chat, that, uh, you're screaming at us to change. Right now, we've got the Packers, obviously, with the 25th first pick. We got it started on a slower setting. We're going to do seven rounds pretty much split between public and PFF. We're going to draft a little bit less for positional value and a little more for needs and have the random stuff be kind of less. Middle sounds good for Gene, so I say oh, let's do it. If you're ready to rumble, let's start our uh, start our draft. Dude, I'm so glad you did that because in my head I went, oh, that'd be so nice if he, he has that <laughs> ready to go. <laughs> Nailed it. All right, so if we start this, it is kind of cool, too. I like in the beginning, so when it's slower, you can actually see who the teams and what they're drafting and all that stuff. If you can notice, too, it's nice to look at the Bears and just see how pathetic they are. They have the first pick and the ninth pick, and then they have the 75th and the 122nd. I tell you, that is a garbage team, just a garbage organization, full of garbage people. Let's start the draft. How do you really feel, Jacob? <laughs> I think you feel like uh, the Bears still suck. That's exactly how I feel. All right, let's get her started. All right. Caleb Williams, no surprise, went first. Drake May, second. Malik Neighbors, third. Joe Alt, fourth. Marvin Harrison, Jr. Quinion Mitchell, sixth. Romo Dunze, seventh. We'll turn it down. Here, Brock Bowers, eighth. Now, let's just for let's pause it right here and just just take a peek. So the Vikings are on the clock. Ha, that's a good spot to pause. The Bears, no, that's kind of surprising. They went with uh, Williams with their first pick, and then they came back in the ninth pick and took Latte Latu, which for them would be probably smart, but I would have thought that they would have picked one of the receivers, but um, Roma Dunes, they went pretty quick there. But there, there's a lot of people there that they could have picked for. So at this point, I don't really think there's any need to trade up. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, there's only been one cornerback taken. Only one offensive lineman. Is that correct? That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. If this is how this draft actually were to fall, guys, this is like our ideal situation right now. So do we want to look at trading back? I mean, we're not even there yet. Right now, I think the way this is, you know, Let I just thought right now, this is just not the type of draft where we need to trade up. You can already tell the way stuff's going. So, yeah, the uh, Vikes just took Jane Daniels. Dallas Turner finally just went to uh, Broncos. There, Fontenay went to the Raiders at 13. Terry Arnold goes off the board at 14, so there's the second cornerback. DeJean now falling at 15, so now there's a little bit of a run there. Jared Verse at 16 to the Seattle Seahawks. Waga just went to the Jaguars at 17. Ashanu, 18 to the Bengals. 19's J.J. McCarthy to the Rams. That's another one that actually is realistic that I haven't thought. I was just going to say that that totally makes sense, right? Isn't it? Yeah. A little, little Harbaugh reunion over there. Absolutely. Uh, Johnny Newton went to the 20th pick to the Steelers. That one makes sense, too. Just a That's a Steelers pick. You know what I mean? Yep. Uh, so we're got well, J.C. Latham just went to the Dolphins at 21. We're up in just a few picks. Brian Thomas Jr. went to the Eagles. I could see that happening. The Vikes take Nate Wiggins. It looks like with a trade from Cleveland, I could see that obviously too. They need cornerback help, it seems like, always, and Wiggins would be a good pick for them. The Dallas Cowgirls are on the clock, and then it's us. I have no reason here. I don't want to do any trading up. Obviously, we already decided that. So let's just see who we have here in our player pool. Dallas Cowboys picked Adani Mitchell. And now, would you look at this? Would you look at this? Would you look at this? <laughs> Somebody come look at this. Would you just come look at this? This is kick this screams we have to trade back, right? The only yeah. problem is we've got see. two offers. You want to look see. at them? We can peek real right now at the office. Oh Arizona. It's perfect, right? Because we want to see. We wanted to stay in the first round if we traded back. Okay. So let's see, let's see the other option. Let's see. The other option. Let's see, uh, let's see. What is the uh, – I'm scrolling, scrolling down here. Why yeah, can't I see the next here. offer? Look on the drop box here on that one right there. Right here? Yep. Oh, Kansas City. Okay, let's see. So if the Kansas City's offering 32. Ooh. 
So do you want to go – how far back do we want to go? Well, let's take a look at the, the player pool then. Go back to draft a player. All right, let's see. So we've got Marius Mims, tackle from Georgia, is available. Graham oh, Barton from Duke, another tackle. Oh, okay. Look at we got his. Mr. Kool-Aid McKinstry available. And uh, my favorite, Jackson Powers Johnson, center out of Oregon. I think my favorite, too. Troy Franklin and Peyton Wilson and our boy Newbin. Hello, Newbin. Hello, Newbin. Zach Frazier on the board still. Sanistrill, that guy has been moving up the boards like crazy. He yep. is starting to really impress me. Apparently, he is just a shut down, like, athlete, crazy, like, strong guy corner. Got Penix Jr. I mean, ah, uh, if me, I think I got to go. I would probably trade back two spots with the Cardinals and make sure that we get either our pick of Barton Mims or um, whoever the uh, blah, 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 blah. Kool-Aid. Should we see if we can fleece them out of 27 and 35? <laughs> no, that won't happen. But we could try to take 71. Um because that we did the rich, uh, rich hill trade thing, and basically to move up in our spot, they need to get yeah, swaps picks with us and give us like a third or a fourth or something like that is what it was. So okay, so let's try. You're saying twenty seven and seventy one. Yeah, try or 90. 90. 90. 90 is more realistic. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll give them our twenty five. And then we'll give them our twenty five. Let's see. Yeah, see, that's that's about fair there. We can pick a player too. Should we get rid of Josh Myers? No, it's just punch. <laughs> I'm terrible. All right, let's offer the trade. Are we good? What does the chat yeah. say? Are they on board? Looks good to the Cardinals. Trade oh. accepted. Look at that. All right, I like it. I'm cool Cardinals are on the clock. Oh, that's a great pick too. Think about this now. All of a sudden, Bates made it true. We trade two back, get extra pick, and if it's ninety, then we have eighty-eight, ninety, and ninety-one. We go to work right there, dude. Okay, so we're on the clock. We've got three trade offers. <laughs> do we look uh, at trading again, or do we have to actually take a player here? So here's the thing: people will say it's unrealistic if you guys were to trade back again. But if you guys remember, this is exactly what we did when we had Jaden Reed in our sights. We traded back twice because we knew that nobody else was going to do that or nobody else was going to come up and pull um, Jaden Reed from us. Cause everybody else had a mock like two or three, you know, rounds later, whatever the case was. All right. So let's read, let's regroup here. Kool-Aid McKinstry, Jackson powers, Johnson, take a look at the trades quick, just to see if it's at all realistic. All right. Carolina 33. We'd trade him. We could go to 33. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> let's see who else. Tennessee is offering us pick 38. Um, and we've got the Texans 42. Well, we pick at 41. So yeah. I don't uh, think. I think we should stick and pick. Stick and pick? I think so. All right. So is there any positions we want to look at? I mean, right. I think it has to be either one of these two players, in my opinion. Chat. What are your thoughts? In my opinion, I think it has to be either Kool-Aid McKinstry or JPJ. Um, both of them, I think, are locked to start immediately. Uh, M. Smitty saying Kool-Aid. J. Cole saying Kool-Aid. I mean, that to me just sounds like it's the smartest move right now. We've got Brock saying Kool-Aid. Oh, you got Ron saying Kool-Aid. We got Prince Cap saying, oh, yeah. Wow. So I'm the only one, which is crazy because I'm Mr. Defense. I, I'm the only one voting for JPJ, I guess. No, we got Sutherland and Dave are saying JPJ. Coach, let's see what you think. Yeah, what's Coach Lynn say? He didn't give us enough. Come on, Coach, you got to give us a oh, – now it's getting a little more even here. Oh, we got more for JPJ. Yep. Dig it. <laughs> LPJ or trade, LPJ, LPJ, Kool Aid or trade. Oh boy. All right. Shavink came in and said Kool Aid. Well, Jake's, we to... Jake is our draft expert, so we're going to defer to Jake Shavink. All right. We got so pull, pull the pick the... is in for the Green Bay Packers, picking at number 27. Nice. That felt good. Kool Aid McKinstry, you are a Green Bay Packer. Come on, guy. So Troy Franklin goes immediately afterwards to Buffalo, followed by our boy Mike Sanistrill to the Lions. That sucks. Lad McConkey to the Ravens. 49ers are up on the clock, and they get Peyton Wilson. That sucks even worse. 
All right. <laughs> Chop Robinson goes wow. to the Chiefs. Chop Robinson to the Chiefs. And JPJ goes to the, the uh, Panthers. That's all right. Bo Nix to the Patriots. That's kind of realistic right there. Uh, Adiza, Isaac to the Cardinals. Rake Straw, oh. Tim goes to the They got the my Washington. boy. Keon Coleman goes after that. Tyler Guyton's off the board to the Titans. We are up in just a few picks. Oh, Fingers Zach crossed. The, the oh, pit. I knew it was going to happen. <laughs> okay, we just lost Newbin to the freaking Washington Redskins. I don't care. And uh, Zach oh, Frazier man. just got picked by the Panthers, who also just picked JPJ. So the Panthers just doubled up on center slash guard, I guess. They're really going to revitalize that offensive line. So Washington yeah. needs a quarterback. Do we trade Alex Magoo? For Tyler Newbin in a pick. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeesh. Yeesh. All right. Do you want to look at the trade offer, sir? And the chat. Ooh. So we're at 41. All right, chat. Do you want us to even look at trades here at 41? Um, first of all, let's take a peek at the player pool here. I Michael quarterback Jr. Thanks, Jr. Jordan Morgan, I know that uh, we've seen that that's a lot of people like him. Roman Wilson, some people think that he's one of the better wide receivers in this league, in this draft. I'm sorry. Tavion Sanders, I just have been completely looked past that. Um, Braden Fisk, I love him. I'm not sure about where his value is right now at this, in this draft. Ricky Pearsall may be my favorite wide receiver in the draft. And then there's my favorite, Javon Bullard, who apparently had an amazing interview I listened to Daniel Jeremiah's podcast, which was sent to me by a listener. I can't remember exactly who it was. I feel horrible. Um, dang it. Somebody on Twitter. Uh, it was a really good interview. I ended up having to listen to the whole episode because the they highlighted how he was apparently in the one-on-one -on -one interviews, just like a complete leader. So was that, that uh, Do You Rant on Twitter? I think it was Do You Rant. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Yes, that was Do You Rant. And yeah, they highlighted how he was just a super mature, well-rounded leader. Jonathan Brooks is there. Chris Jenkins, TJ Tampa. You know what? I honestly think if we could try to trade back, it might be smart because I don't like the top of this player pool compared to the bottom. Well, let's take a gander at the trades here. Sure. So Jacksonville yeah. is offering us 48. So move back seven spots. Yeah. Do you think we'd still get Bullard? Because that's basically who I'm targeting right now. Miami's offering us 55. Tampa Bay is offering 57. Tennessee... 106 so um far back i think we either do jacksonville or take bullard here that's my opinion so you're okay okay interesting so you're so if we pick you're saying take javon bullard i would take bullard or try to move back to 48 um with the jags but i don't let's, think it'll be let's there. Let, let's see what the chat thinks i'm i'm with you i think we should stick and pick and take bullard what does the chat think Chat is saying here, dang, there's a lot of people saying Morgan. Oh, wow. Morgan or Chapel. Sutherland says Morgan. Atham says interior O line. Coach is saying trade back. Prince is saying trade back. Brock saying trade back. Dead Fish says he's like Colson, but maybe trade back first. Trade back and get Bullard. Um, Bates is saying he's with me, one of the two, but he's not sure. Morgan or Bullard. Boy. And yeah, Prince is saying take take the take the trade back. Um, let's take. A, can we look at uh, linebacker? Take, real quick? Uh, yes, we can. Just to see where we're looking at in that situation. All right. So, just scroll up the, to the top of the player pool and then hit your position. Yep. All right. Let's what did you say you wanted to see? Take a look at the linebackers. Linebackers. All right. Edrin Cooper is on the board. Okay, so and man, Dude, those, Colson, Jeremiah Trotter Jr. all on the board. I, I think that we chill on linebacker until fifty-eight or eighty-eight. Does that sound okay. all right? Yeah. So let's get back to the just regular people here. I think we have to take Jordan Morgan, man. Don't you think so, people? I think so. You know, if line, we're going to pick here, yeah, Morgan. I think that we should be a little more realistic when pick here and take Morgan. Um, you can pull up his grade real quick, Tim, if you want to. Because I just remember that he was very well rounded. Yeah, I like that. I like that. <laughs> he played left tackle pretty true. So, you know, I guess the only thing would be is do we want to spend a second round pick on a left tackle if we think that Walker's going to be the guy? Like, does that make sense? I mean, I know we. Do we uh, or do we think Jordan Morgan can go to the right side and we can right. kick 
Zach Tom to center. Right. I mean, that would have to be the game plan, in my opinion. But look at his pass block, baby. That's great. Yeah, and this is like what Clayton talks about, too. You see improvement. Right. 53.1, 83.1, um, Consistent. Oh, I really want Bullard here. That's the only thing. All right, screw it. Let's take let's take Morgan, and then if we uh, if we don't get Bullard, then we'll have to try for somebody else. The pick is in. Deadfish says he thinks. I think that I saw somewhere too that Morgan had been mocked and getting kicked inside. So either way, oh, okay. I think that that'd be a good pick either way. All right, so Jordan Morgan to the Packers. Roman Texans Wilson. take Roman Wilson. Yeah, yeah. Falcons take Jatavian Sanders. The Raiders take Jonathan Brooks. The Raiders. <laughs> the Raiders. Kamari Lassiter to the Colts. Michael Penix Jr. to the, the Giants. I could see that happening as well. New oh, York to oh, all Giants. No. Oh, Javon Bullard gone at 50 to the Eagles. You can see what? that. What? Yeah. That's exactly. Blake Corum to the Dolphins at 55. TJ Tampa to the Cowgirls. Too old for this. No, Rick Straw went pretty early. All right, so we are on the board. And, of course, look at what happened. The, yeah, Cowboys took TJ Tampa. And then, of course, the Buccaneers came in and swiped Marshawn Neeland, who just recently had a top 30 visit with your boy. Um, but you know what? Here, How, the how bad do we want a safety? My, 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 how the turntables. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, like I think we need to hold out for our boy Kalen Bullock here. I think that either that or uh, to Darian Tyler Emerson. He's a he's been shooting up the board here. Yeah, Can't that's uh, Emilio's there. pick right there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so maybe not safety yet because we do pick at eighty eight. There's a chance we could get Bullock. Let's take a peek and see if our uh, boy Junior Colson's there. How's that sound? All righty. Ooh, Edrin Cooper's there too. Christian Haynes is on the board. Oh, boy. <clears throat> Cornerback Andrew Phillips, another guy that's kind of been on the rise. Sure, sure. Rook, a ro 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 I'm not a fan of Suomotaya. Um, uh, who is that that you wanted to look for? I want to look at linebacker quick and see if Junior Colson is still there. Slash, um, Let's look at linebacker in the chat, yeah. too. Chat, what do you guys want? Yeah, Ju Junior Colson and Edron Cooper are on the board. So is Trotter Jr., Okay. So you, you guys think that we should swipe? Because right now I don't think it, we're definitely not going to get Colson if we wait until 88. So the thing is, is do you think Colson or Cooper, who's your better linebacker? In my opinion, it's hands down Colson. Me too. I, I would agree with that. I like uh, Junior Colson. And I don't know if I like him enough to reach that far. We're at 58. Right. But like you said, who's going to be left? Because after that, it's a long fall to where that "quote unquote" mic is. You know what I mean? Although I have seen different people say that they think that Cooper can be the mic. Um, mm -hmm. Pete says Colson. Clever says Colson. Linebacker says Bren. Bates says he likes them both. Do, 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 do. So the chat's on board with taking a linebacker here. It sounds like it. Deadfish wants to trade back. We have no offers right now, Deadfish. So. Um, also, we do not have a safety run, but we have a plan to get that safety in our next grouping because we have 88, we have 90, and 91. We'll get our safety there. Yeah. So the question is right here at 58, do we want to take a linebacker? Here's Jake's freaking trying to get all in our heads. This is the better linebacker for what spot, though, because that context is crucial. Tell That's true. Are we looking for a mic? I think so. I think that, that, I think that that's... The, the biggest reason why we would need to get him because a lot of people feel like that he's the only true Mike. Um, oh, you're saying Colson, right? Yeah, yeah. Look at my him opinion, right now. In my opinion, I think we should take Colson. I agree. All right, Look, Jake right, Shavink, what do you think? No, we're not asking him anymore. <laughs> you have three Colsons in a row, four Colsons in a row, five. Col All right, let's just take him. Come on. With the 58th pick in the draft, the Green Bay Packers select Junior Colson, linebacker out of Michigan. Yes. Very good. 
Uh, Xavier really just went off. Sumatoya just went off. Jaden Hicks just went to the Lions. Man, they're taking some guys. Amagaji just went to the Ravens. Max Melton just went to the Niners. I hate this draft for all that. Christian Haynes just went to the Chiefs. That's rough, man. Uh, Edrin Cooper now just went off the board to the Panthers. Just went to the Cardinals. And the Washington people that run are have Malachi Corley. Brandon Coleman, that big tackle slash guard, went to the Patriots. Jalen Wright, the quick Tennessee running back, went to the Chargers. Andrew Phillips, Kennedy, uh, Kentucky quarterback, went to the Giants. Jonah Ellis to the Cardinals. Blake Fisher, the tackle to the Jets. I can see that happening. Jermaine Burton, Alabama wide receiver. Another one goes to the Lions. Troy Benson, running back to the Falcons. Devontae Walker to the Bears. Actually, that could be a good pick. They need another big wide receiver to match with the quarterback they got. McMillan to the Brown Broncos. The quarterback, Spencer Rattler to the Raiders. And then that Brandon Dorless. I don't know what you think about him to the Washington football big people team. Bucky Irving, the quick running back, went to the Atlanta Falcons. All right. Oof, that was a mouthful. <laughs> and some other people are getting picked. Oh, there's our oh, guy. Oh, no. Kalen Bullock off the board to Seattle. So now we're going to have to do some rethinking here. So, chat, rethink what we're going to be doing. We have three picks coming up in the next four picks. Uh, so that's crazy. So what's up with uh, – oh, that's right. Miami forfeited Ooh. their their pick. Yes, they did. That's, that's the, okay. Idiots. <laughs> All right. So, well, look, look who's that. on the board here at 88. Boy, that's sweet cool. baby Ray Davis. Wow. I like Kyrie Jackson pretty much, too. Can you just keep scrolling and see who we got here? Malik Washington, some people think, is one of the better uh, wide receivers here in the draft. I like Javon Solomon, but not there. Eric All, he'll be here for the whole draft, he says. Cooper Beebe, I think that he needs to be one of the next four picks. Um, in my opinion, he is on here too. Mason yeah, McCormick. So we're at 88, 90, and 91. Okay. <laughs> Mason McCormick is on the board. Yes. Potter Jr. still on the board. All right. Should we look at, do we want to take a peek at safety? Yes. Let's take a peek at safety. DDT oh, at Texas Tech. Cam Kinchin's on the board still. What? I think DDT's before Kinchin's, though, in my opinion. I would agree with that. Mike Smith, Leon Baki, Cole Bishop yeah, but on the I, board. So maybe we don't go safety here. Look at this. Malik I, Mustafa. Well, I think we need to take a stab at safety at least out of one of these three picks just because it's such a position to need. I agree. I just I don't know if we need to do it right now at 88. What do you right. think? Well, Unless you really want player. DDT, right? Well, let's look at the all DT. Excuse me. <laughs> it's possible that the Buccaneers might go with the running back. It looks like it's one of their needs. So, are we cool with losing either Ray Davis or Marshawn? Um, uh, what am I? Oh, to say? I see what you're saying. Take you a running I mean? back here. Well, let's let's look at running back as a position. So Ray Davis out of Kentucky, Marshawn Lloyd out of USC, Tyrone Tracy out of Purdue, Blake Watson, Mr. Watson out of Memphis. They fall off after that, right? Oh, yeah. they still have Allen in there? Well, okay, maybe not. Audrey Audrey Estimate. Estimate. Shoot. Okay, maybe we do. Oh, man. <laughs> this is. I thought this would be easier, but... Uh... <laughs> Chat, what do you think? Position-wise, what should we... I would love to get Ray Davis here, personally. He's the best yeah. player available on the board. He's a little pinball, a little bit of a change of pace. Um, I, I think he's one of the better backs. I, I love it. I love Ray Davis. Plus, if the Buccaneers are going to swoop him, I'd be pissed. I would agree. I have no problem taking Ray Davis here. Chat? I see a lot of Davis. Here's one for Davis. But I don't know if they're talking about Isaiah Davis or Ray Davis. That could be the issue, though. See what I mean? No, because yeah. Isaiah Davis is way farther down in the draft. I say it's it's got to be Ray Davis. Let's pull the pull the trigger. Ray Davis. Ah, I can't do it. Pick number eighty-eight, Ray Davis. You are a Green Bay Packer. All right, let's see where the Buccaneers go. They went with the edge defender. Okay, so now we've got two picks in a row. I think that we definitely need to lock in Cooper BB. I think that needs to be one of our picks for sure. Chat, how do we feel about that? Here's a BB here. 
Got a BB here. Got a BB here. Uh, we got a BB here. Boy. Yeah. Actually, we still have Trotter down there, too. Oh, boy. I think that we need to think about doing, in my opinion, if it was me, <laughs> I go Cooper BB and DDT. Yeah, back to back. That's what I would do. Um, here, too old for this, just said the same thing. We got a lot of BB here. We got a lot of BB here. We got a BB here. We got a BB here. I think we yeah, BB. BB. Let's throw BB in right now. Let's, let's Cooper BB, you are a Green Bay Packer. Come on down. Come on down. Yeah, I can give him a little. There you go. There. All right, so we are back on the clock, picking mm -hmm. at ninety-one. Our next picks are 126, 169, 202, 219, 245, and 255. Well, I think right here we have to either do Bishop or DDT. I think that we cannot go any farther in this draft without addressing safety. Okay, don't tell don't tell Emilio, but I like Bishop, Mustafa, or Aladipo more than I like DTD. I will defer to the chat. I think we're in agreement that we're going to go safety here, correct? We've got a lot of people asking for Bishop in this chat. Bishop, Bishop, Bishop now, Bishop, Bishop, <laughs> Bishop, Bishop is better. Well, you know what? The chat has spoken and the pick is in. Ooh, I thought you oh, were going to do your, I thought you were going to do one of the patented when you swap and take the other guy. I was like, oh, Tim's going to start a riot. <laughs> Cole Bishop, you are a Green Bay Packer. I think that we should try to come back in this draft, swing around, and then uh, try to get Oladapo. Oladapo, however the hell he said. I'm Smitty. Oladapo, Oladipo. I heard Oladipo. Ola Home Depot. All right. Potter just uh, went, unfortunately, to the Jaguars. Michael Pratt, the uh, younger quarterback, that younger, the uh, rookie quarterback, went to the Pittsburgh Steelers. DDT just went to L.A. Marshawn Lloyd just went to the Redskins. Cade Stover, some had as one of the better tight ends in this draft, went to the Panthers. Mason McCormick, one of my favorite guards, went to the Seattle Seahawks. And, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> Cedric Von Prahn to the just Chargers. The Chargers. Hirsch. Ew. Hush. Christian well, Mahogany right. to the Giants at 107. Jared Wiley to the Vikings at 108. Cam Kitchens is an Atlanta Falcon. Pick 109. <laughs> Thanks, Tool, for this. He says, congrats, guys. You managed to keep my chats on topic for a bit here. That's an accomplishment. It's been an accomplishment that I haven't allowed any curse words for myself or from the chat tonight. And Eric Nicely done. Nicely Eric's, done. Dude. Eric's been semi, uh, semi good today, so that's cool. Tavondre Sweat to the Bengals at 115. Yo, he just fell pretty far, man. That's the farthest I've seen him getting drafted. Wow. I like that they're updating that, though, a little bit. Like Watson to the Pittsburgh, I can see that. Um, Vaki just went to the Eagles. I can see that as well. Jerry and Jones, one of my favorite quarterbacks. And then finally, Braylon Allen off the board. And he goes to guess who? The Bears. Oh, that's, poor that's guy. Cool. His yeah. career's over before it starts. <laughs> All right. Victor Norzad to the Buccaneers, putting us on the clock at 126. Best available halfback Isaiah Davis out of South Dakota State. Boy. Audric Estime, Notre Dame. Jeez. Oof. Tommy oh. Eichberg. Tanner Bordolini is on the board. Taj Washington, wide receiver. Makai Wingo. Some people Ooh. like him quite a bit. Um, he was one of the top defensive linemen, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Jordan McGee, a guy that people have been talking about lately. Boy, this is a tough spot here. I don't like this round, this pick right here. And we have a long ways to go until our next pick, guys. we got a, over 30 spots here. Um, Mason Smith was another people thing, another guy people liked. Let's go back up to the top here. Let's think about who we've gotten so far. We've taken our safety. We've taken a guard. We've taken a tackle, a linebacker, a cornerback, and a running back. What else are we thinking of need? I think we need to get under their safety for sure. We have plans to maybe come back and get all Oladapo. I think that we need to think about maybe addressing linebacker again. Does it make sense to try a stab at Tommy Eichenberg or McGee? Because now, basically, if you think about it, we should have our, our mic figured out. We would want maybe either uh, our Sam or our Will, so it would be a smaller guy like McGee 
who hopefully would be a little bit better in coverage. I like Jarvis Brownlee, but I also like DJ James quite a bit. I'm thinking corner before another safety. I would almost rather pick up another corner. What do you think about DJ James here? Some people may think it's a stretch, but I love his play style. Can you pull him up and we can see where he played? Is he outside? Let's see. Look at that. I like that. So he's uh, played. Yeah, uh, boundary corner pretty much. He's played a yeah. 32 snaps in the slot. Right. 600 at corner, 50 in the box. So Ugh, that run defensive grade is <laughs> horrendous. Yeah, I don't like it. Um, but his man coverage grade's great. Look at his coverage grade in general. Yeah. I mean, zone coverage, not bad too. So, Dead Fitch is asking for his measurables. What's his size? Let's see. Now here's a guy. Here's the guy that's six foot one, 164 pounds. 164? That's tiny. That's got to be below our threshold. It's got to be. Got news for you. Those are my measurables. Maybe I should. <laughs> I don't think that maybe Jay can tell us in the, I, I would have to believe that that's 10, 15 pounds below our, yeah. I think 180 is small. He's, he's 15 pounds off 180. That to me sounds like, no, that couldn't happen. Okay. So uh, DJ James, no. Um, Jeff Brownlee. Can we look at him quick? Cause Brownlee uh, Jr. Out of Louisville. Who, who else plays at Louisville? Who played at Louisville in the Packers secondary? Oh, um, uh, I'm drawing a blank right now. That would be uh, <laughs> Mr. Jair Alexander. That's correct. Uh, uh, let's see. 69.6 in 2022, 77.9 in 2023. Another boundary guy. Yeah. A um, little bit more snaps in the box. Look at there. Here. His run defensive grade. That's better for you. Yeah, but then he slips on the man coverage grade a little bit. More yep. of a zone backer. Chris, um, I think Chris is right here. Your threshold's more like 190 at most. Uh, yeah, most let's people. see. Should we check his measurables here? Brownlee. Let's, yeah. Brownlee, let's six go feet, go 190, right on it. I, I at, at, at this point, I wouldn't mind taking a stab at him just because I don't see any other real position. Can we go back to the all? <laughs> yeah, we do have a trade offer, by the way. I don't know if we want to continue to go backwards. but yeah, I'm surprised that we're already in. Round four, we're already at the 52 minute mark, so we kind of have to get this going. Yeah. Okay. So, best available. What Pat about Matt Conclave? Matt, Con Matt, Matt Concals. Can we look another, at his another tackle? Yeah. I don't know. 70. Let's see. He's played right guard. He's played right tackle and he's played left tackle. Not bad. Yep. Jerry and John's already left uh, J. Cole last few picks ago, unfortunately. Uh, let's get out of here. You know me, I'm leaning towards defense. I kind of like the Eichenberg pick, to be honest. But the Ohio State unit, oh my goodness. He had a booty, but look at last season. Doesn't that sound like something the Packers would do? I guess he had a great interview. He he has, I guess, the measurables that they're looking for. Um, 6'2, 239. Eichenberg was a two time captain and three, three year start at Ohio State throwback type of linebacker who loves to hit in the defense and run near the line of scrimmage. He was superb in that role in 2022. He's slippery between the tackles, quick sifting through offensive linemen. Yeah. Bottom line, Eichenberg is a strong side linebacker who can find work on early down rolls as a Mike or Sam specifically in a four, three. Interesting. I like However, that. you don't want him operating in space and sub package situations and coverage on late downs too often due to a lack of lateral mobility. Interesting. Boy, Tommy Eichenberg. Let's see. I don't like so, it. I don't like it. I don't know. Yeah. What do you think about um, Wingo and Mike? Um, can we look at? Yeah, scroll down a little bit. I think Makai Wingo might be the pick here. I think or he Jordan. might be the pick, or Jordan McGee. Yeah. Um, have we, we haven't taken D line either, we have we? No. So, do you want to grab Makai Wingo? I like. I do. I do. do look at that. I like the way he grades out. Look at those games. He plays just solid. Yeah, against real opponents too, right? Florida yeah. State, Georgia. Yeah, like I think this is the pick, guys. Let's look at his measurables too, real quick. Six one two ninety five. Let's do it. Let's run it in. Look at this right here. 
When he goes shorter arms and legs, because he's perfect. That's a good pick. All right. I like that. Bates likes Wingo. Southern likes Wingo. Cleavers with the Wingo. There we go. Let's do it. Makai Wingo, you are a Green Bay pack. Now we have 41 picks until we get to our pick again. Do you want to speed it up? Can you switch it now to a little faster? I sure can. Draft. There we are. There we go. Now here's your draft. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, we got to get the clip of him. He's on some dating show in the 80s, and he legitimately talks about how he like carries $100 bills hanging out of his pants so that the ladies know he's got money. Now there's a guy. Now there's a lady. Uh, so let's go. Let's go. I'm oh. seeing some people we liked flying off the board here. but Hold on. We're on the clock. Ooh, this Holy is cow. Uh, those of you listening on the pod, uh, <laughs> the best available right now is Michigan guard Zach Center, who some think that if not for the injury, would be one of the best, if not the top three best guards in this draft. He's ranked 163. We're picking at 169, but there also is Trevin Wallace, Trevin Wallace at 168 from Kentucky there. Otherwise, oh, our oh. Baton Aladapo. Oh boy. We have that to base our original board. plan. We have to pick him, otherwise we're not going to get him. That's Six one two seventeen. Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh, man. Look at that run defense grade: ninety-one point three, eighty-four point four coverage grade. We got it to forced incompletion rate: nineteen point four. Guys, I think Oladipo is the pick here. We have to look at the trend. Let's see who he's trending. See where it's trendy. Oh, trending, <laughs> trending upwards. <laughs> Look at to who though. Yeah, exactly. All right, L- line line him up, lock him in. <sighs> Pull that trigger. Keaton Ola Depo. Ola Depo. We'll oh. know how to pronounce his name because he's ended up going to. Oh my gosh, the freaking Niners took Josh Newton too. That, they're having an unbelievable draft. I wish I could see what they did. McGlothern, Dwight McGlothern just went to the Colts. Bo Braid, that's somebody that we had some eye on. Michael Barnett, a linebacker I really liked, just left. So did Darius Massau and Curtis Jacobs. Three linebackers just went off the board here. We have our first punter available. He is the best on the uh, clock right now, Tory Taylor from uh, Iowa, in case anybody was worried about that. Ooh, here's an interesting move. Had we went with Zach Zinter, our guy Trey Taylor is the next best available safety. Available at the 201 spot. We're picking at, p- picking at 202, followed by our own Quagmire at Mr. Dylan Lobby. He is sitting there at 203. Giggity. Atta boy. Giggity, giggity. <laughs> Too old for this. Wants us to pick up the weird date face guy. Date rate face. That's what I call him. <laughs> He's got date rate face. I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, okay. So I don't, I, I, if you could scroll back up for me quick, Tim. Let's go to the top here. Yeah, Troy Taylor. Or Tory Tory Taylor. Holden says double up on safety. You know, it's not a bad idea, but we'd be tripling up on safety because we took DDT, I thought, didn't we? I thought we did. Uh, Let's see. We should be able to scroll back up here. It takes forever. They suck at this. That's the only thing I don't like about PFS. Okay, so at 20, where do we pick here? Yeah, Kool-Aid there. We went up to... 27, we took Kool-Aid, so there's corner. 41, we took Jordan Morgan, tackle. Uh, 58, we took Junior Coulson, a linebacker. Yep, I like that. I like I like that pick. And then, uh, let's see, 88, we took Sweet Baby Ray, That's right. halfback out of Kentucky. Cooper Ooh. Beebe, a guard at That's 90. It. Cole Bishop, 91 That's at safety. So we have... We have two safeties now with Oladapo and Bishop. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then we got D-line. That's right. Then we got Makai Wingo. Yep. All right. All right. All right. All right. So I don't think taking another safety here is necessarily a bad move. I don't know if that's the move we want to make, though. Yeah. Um, what does the chat think in here position-wise? You're saying another guard. So one of them saying check cornerback, one saying check tackle. Let's look at the let's look at tackle and in, interior offensive line to see if there's anybody worth because that'd be tough to get any decent players if there is anybody that we've been taking a look at inside and then look at tackle too. 
Oops, sorry about that. Let's see. Yeah. Offensive tackle and interior O line. Okay. We are Marshall, Ethan Driscoll. Joe's our guy, Jalen Sundell. I was going to say that'd be the only one that I'd really want to take a stab at. Um, I, I love and, the way he created. Sounds like they might kick him interior to a guard, but I would still like him to take a to try a right tackle. Um, he may be on the board at yeah, 219 or two, even 245, possibly. I think maybe. And then also we have got our – Elmar Glaze so, out of uh, Maryland be I another like late-round late tackle. Yeah, let's so let's leave the tackles for a little bit. You um, want to take I, a look at corner? Let's look at corner quick. Let's look at cornerback. Elijah Jones, pick it, pick it. Elijah Jones – 6'2", 184 out of Boston College. That's Boston College. Halfley. That's Halfley's guy. He said that he is the smartest cornerback in this draft. I think that we should take that. Uh -oh. Elijah it. Jones, you are a Green Bay Packer, sir. Yes. yes. Right, so who are we looking to grab at oh, 219? No. I think he's still there. I think he's still there. Who are you looking for? I will tell you in just a second. Oh, no. Did he go? He might have already went. I like Tyner McLaughlin. Um, there's Frank Gore there. Um, darn it. I think we may have already lost him. Who, oh, Jalen Sundell. That's who I was hoping Jaylen for. Jalen Sundell. That's, that's our tackle, right? Yeah, because I don't think he's going to make it to 245. Sundell. Let's take him. Jalen Sundell, let's take a look. 6'5", 300 pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. North yeah. Dakota State Bison. 77.3 in 2022, 82.9 last year. Look, he's played center and left tackle. Interesting. Let's do this. Wow, 89.2 pass block grade, 78.0 run blocking grade. Zone grade, 77.9. That's huge. We uh, like to do a little zone blocking up here. Yeah, I think yep. this is the pick. Is the chat is the chat on board? Yep, they're saying lock it up, run it in. Yes, Jalen Sundell, you are a Green Bay Packer. Nice. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. We got pick two four to five coming up now, Jacob. This is a nice. I, I like this draft. It's been uh, oof. I tell you what. Should we the take hip... Joe Milton just to make Clayton angry? No. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Not just to make him angry. It, it... People, people might get mad, but honestly, this would seem like a stupid, nut or stupid maybe thing. But I honestly think the Packers would do this. Take a seventh round pick on a developmental quarterback that can throw it out of the stadium. Like I just think they actually would. Carter Bradley, another one that's possible there. Austin Reed, look at all the quarterbacks that have fallen down. Nate Washington, Watson's a guy we talked about. Um, I'm going to obviously try to sink it smart if we looked at the linebackers quick and see if my boy's still there, Mr. Dallas Gant. Um, I, I think we have to try to snag him in the end of the draft if he's there. Same with Olaf oh. In my opinion, you grab Gant here. All there. Yeah. Yeesh. I, I, in my opinion, guys, I say we take Gant, play that Toledo. Part of that awesome defense that Quinion Mitchell was at. If you want to pull him up, he grades unbelievably well last two seasons, and he's played good, solid football. Yeah. Not a pass rush guy, but he's just more of that. He's a um, run stopper. Yeah. For sure. Which we need on this defense. Ish. 83.0 on coverage, too. Right. Um, see that. Wow. 97 snaps in the slot, too. Mm -hmm. Um see him being that you know that will or the sam you know six foot three 230 he's a big boy let's do it i think we should do it dallas gant toledo rockets you Rocket to the are a green bay packer sir <laughs> gunner glaze just went off darn it that was one that i was gonna say all right so milton's gone carter bradley should be <laughs> mr irrelevant for our draft should we put can you pull up his stats? I want to say something like, wasn't he the, no, that's not the guy I'm thinking of. I okay, can't believe mind. you're making me look at a quarterback right now. You're, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Shouldn't have done that. Uh, uh, 
I don't know, man. At this point in the draft, I would either say pick another linebacker, all Foscio, or uh, I don't know, take a stab at. Um, if we take a quarterback, we take Sam Hartman. Kendall Milton's there. Some people had him random, like on the thirty third team. They have him as a like a some odd starter, like a low end starter. Omar, oh, look at this. Whoa. Here's my pick right here. Omar That's Brown, good. safety Omar. out of Nebraska. Run it in, Omar. 64.6 in 2022, but he bounced all the way up to an 82.8 last year. Played in the slot. And the coverage bottom. grade of 84.5, 74.3 run defense grade, which is good. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I think this is good value. Omar it's Brown. Good. I love that pick. Should we do it? Yep. I think Let's so. Let's do it. That's the perfect way to end our draft. Ooh, I'm excited about this one. All right, so Omar as we Brown. round out the end of the draft, we are, uh, ooh, we have three awards that we just earned. I've never even seen that. It's pretty Sweet. Good. We're getting yeah. our draft graded right now. Look at this. Boy, they give you a lot more information now. So to summarize our draft here, um, I like this a lot. So for our first thing that we did is we swapped back to 27 with the Cardinals. We gave uh, them 25. Obviously, we got 27, and we also got their third round 90th overall pick with the 27th pick. Those of you listening on the pod. Those of you listening on the pod. Kool-Aid McKinstry. Uh, Tim, you want to tell them what we did on the round two? Uh, take some water sips here. Yes, absolutely. So uh, after Kool-Aid at 27, we were up pick 41 in round two. We took a tackle, Jordan Morgan, out of Arizona got an A for that one. Um, got a round... Dundee, <laughs> not a Dundee, but we got a we got an A though. Um, also in the second round at pick fifty eight, one of my favorites, we took Junior Colson, a linebacker out of Michigan. He gave us a D plus for that one. We did not like that. I don't they know. They didn't what like that one. That's all right. We like it though. Round three, Jacob. Who do we take? Well, round three, we went into sweet. Baby Ray Davis as our running back from Kentucky with the 88 spot. It was a nice little chunk what we did there because of the trade back. We ended up having 88, 90, and 91. So we had kind of our our decision making there as far as how we wanted the, the board to fall. So uh, we decided to take the best available, which was Ray Davis. We had a break in between, and then we came back and took Cooper Abibi, the guard out of Kansas State, who's a mauler. And then we decided we had to address our safety position. So we went with Cole Bishop from Utah, who a lot of people love. PFF hated that pick as well. Gave us a D minus. How about in the fourth round, Tim? Round four, pick 126. We took, is it Mecky or is it Mackay? I think it's Mackay, but who knows? Okay. Mackay, Mackay Wingo, D lineman out of Louisiana. And we took uh, with pick 169 in the fifth round. We took safety Keaton Oladapo. I believe that's how you say it. Sure. Oladapo. Yeah. yeah. I think so. About round six, Jacob. Yeah. Round six, we ended up having Elijah Jones fall to us, which I thought was honestly, that might be one of the better picks of the draft. Uh, PFF hated that one again, gave us a D plus, but I've been like, I've, uh, I've had multiple people see multiple scouting reports that he is the most, uh, I guess, off or starter ready because of his, his his mind the way he can break down concepts and tape and all that kind of stuff and he's obviously very coachable from coach Halfley who is obviously starting his first uh, season over here from Boston College and then we rounded it out with another great pick Jalen Sundell tackle out of S uh, North Dakota State got a B for that and then Tim the last two picks what did we do Tim we can't hear you I don't know why you're muted. Oh, I'm muted. Sorry about that. Gosh. Uh, round seven, pick 245. We took linebacker Dallas Gant out of Toledo. Nice. And uh, my favorite pick here in the late rounds, pick 255. We took another swing at safety. Omar Brown from Nebraska. He's not a corn husker anymore. He's a Green Bay Packer. So that is our mock, our seven round mock trading back in the first round. I like that did. a lot. I think I do too. I mean, look at what we did. We addressed what's our biggest um, needs. I'd say offensive line, linebacker, safety, cornerback. Yep. We've got our, our shut down cornerback opposite side of uh, Mr. Jair. We've got a promising tackle that could probably kick inside if we needed to. We've got our first 
starting Mike linebacker. We've got a backup running back now that could be taking over in the next couple uh, years. A starter right out the gates at guard for Cooper Beebe. A, pass, a possible starter slash um, good backups for Bishop. Kai Wingo adds depth, possibly for losing Kenny Clark. Kitan Aladapo, I think, is probably the opposite guy that could start uh, opposite side of McKinney. And just, again, to address that safety position, we followed it with Amar Brown at the last pick. And then I really, really like this, this group of dudes right at the back of the draft here between Jones at cornerback, again, solidifying that positional group. Jalen Sundell, another guy that's going to give us interior offensive line depth because he did, if you remember, play center and offensive tackle, which means I'm sure he can play guard. And finally, Dallas Gant, well-rounded linebacker. I think that that draft is mwah, chef kiss. I agree. I think we did pretty good on this uh, with trading back. You know, I mean, granted, we only traded back a few spots, but I think ultimately it worked out. Uh, they gave us a B overall. Yes. 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 Well, well, got, no, the chat thinks we're okay here. Good, 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 good. All right. Well, we're already at 110, so um, unless you got anything else you want to talk about, we went over where some of those um, up-and-coming dates are going to be for the OTAs. Any other news and stuff like that, we'll be covering tomorrow night, I'm sure. I believe Clayton will be back. I, I would believe for sure that he will be. Um, so for those of you listening on the pod, unless, Tim, you got anything else you want to close with? Uh, just real quick, up in the – wait, it's in this corner right here. Uh, the QR code for Packernet Podcast. You can scan that right there on your screen. It'll take you to the flagship. Make sure you uh, support. You can get all your content over there. Uh, big shout-out to Ryan Schlipp and uh, Jake Shavink over there, of course. It's always draft season. Um, you know, you can definitely get a lot of information. Um, Ryan did a good job uh, on his pod earlier today uh, breaking down some of the corners. So if you didn't get a chance to uh, – Check out Pack Daddy. Make sure you go give that a listen. That QR code up there will take you right home to Packernet Podcast. Jacob, this was fun, man. Yeah, that we were worried that we weren't have uh, enough content to film. And, of course, here we are running 10, 15 minutes over. So hey, that's, that always works. There we go. We'll uh, definitely be back at you live uh, for PTA tomorrow night as well uh, with Clayton. I'm assuming Clayton will be here. If not, me and you will just take over again. We'll do another mock draft. We'll trade up. We'll trade down. We'll trade some players, right? That'd be that would be a crazy one to do. I don't know. <laughs> We'd have to try to think about what would make it realistic. That would actually be interesting because I saw an article today that said something about us trading one of our backup tackles to the Cowboys. So who knows? Wow. We'll see. We'll toss yeah, it. Yeah, maybe that's what we do. Or we Play just do a completely here. unrealistic draft approach. Yeah. We could try that as well. So, uh, well, thank you guys for uh, tuning in. We appreciate the the support, everybody, on all the platforms, YouTube, Rumble. Uh, we're on Twitter as well. Hit that uh, like if you could real quick. Absolutely. Help that algorithm. Smash that like button for us. We'll be back at you tomorrow night, 7 Central for PTA Live. For those of you listening on the pod. That was really good. Thank you for making us a part of your day. Let's go out and be the change we want to see in the world. And uh, what do we say, Jacob? Go Pack Go. The power sweep. Actually, it's the it's the lead play in our in our offense. Yes, a YN or a tight end to open up somewhere between six feet and nine feet. To get an isolation with the with the linebacker. He's on the tackle. He takes the defensive end if he's over him. If he's not, to drive down on the first man to his inside. If the YN has the linebacker taken out. Cuts inside. If the YN has the linebacker here, he comes all the way around. If you look at this play, we're trying to get a seal here and a seal here and try to run this play in the alley.